So hello everybody from me as well. I am very happy to have the opportunity to speak here at Frog. Um, although I have to admit I'm very nervous since this is the first time um, I speak at a conference. Um, so Natalie introduced me already. My name is Benjamin Kierkengast. I'm a master's student at the University of Vienna and uh, at the Danube University Krems. And as the title of my presentation might have teasers already, um, I want to talk about negative user reviews on the game through the darkest of times today. And everything I will talk about is part of a small research project I uh, was working on during my master studies at the University of Vienna. Um, first of all, um, I won't, will give you a short input on the game itself uh, for those of you who don't know it. So I will talk about its background and its mechanics. And after that, I will um, give you a short input on the data I had a look at. Um, and then I'm going to talk about my uh, findings and I will put them in perspective. Um, so the game uh, I'm talking about through the darkest of times is a strategy and survival game uh, set in the time of uh, Hitler's rise to, uh, from the time of Hitler's rise to power in Germany until the end of uh, the Second World War. Uh, the game was developed as the first project of a small developer uh, studio in Berlin called Paint Bucket Games and was published by Handy Games, a subsidiary of THQ Nordic uh, Berlin. And it was released on January 30th this year, which is the day of Hitler's rise to power. Obviously not a coincidence. Um, players uh, take the control of a uh, resistance fighter uh, of a group of resistance fighters with uh, different political alignments uh, in the spectrum from Christian conservatives to communists. First trying to stop uh, the national socialists to seize the power over Germany completely and later trying to save uh, individual victims of Nazism and sabotaging um, uh, national socialist institutions and such. The game is set in four chapters, where the first chapter starts um, again at the uh, day of Hitler's, rises, uh, Hitler's rise to power uh, in 1933. And the group tries to reveal the true intentions of the Nazis uh, to the rest of the society. Um, in the last chapter, um, the other chapters are set in between this time, and the last chapter is set in 1945, uh, shortly before the end of the war, and the resistance group is trying to help the Allied forces as much as possible from within Berlin and also helps individuals and groups. Um, what's very important to note here uh, <clears throat> for later is that the game um, does not allow players to alter history on a larger scale, uh, meaning that players cannot overthrow the National Socialist regime or kill Hitler or something like that. However, players do have the option to interact with individual NPCs on a more private level and even save some uh, NPCs' lives by potentially endangering their own uh, player characters. Um, from a gameplay perspective, there are mainly two ways players can interact with the game. First of all, there is a map of Berlin, which you can see here. Um, um, and there are different tasks available uh, to the players. At first, it's only just a few, and then uh, as you progress, it gets you get more difficult and more tasks um, to fulfill. And the player characters um, have different skill sets and are more likely to succeed certain tasks um, if they have certain skills. For example, if you have a, a communist um, in your group, uh, he will be or he or she will be better at um, gathering donations from factory workers than a Christian conservative would be. Uh, the second way in which uh, players interact with the game is in small narrative sequences, interacting with NPCs, much like in text adventures, and those sequences with, uh, are, with some exceptions, um, without an or with limited impact on the rest of the gameplay. There is obviously a lot um, in this game worth analyzing uh, from the narrative, the gameplay or the art style, I haven't even spoken about. But uh, what I want to talk about and what I stumbled across was uh, the reviews on um, Steam about this game, uh, player reviews. And 
um, they sparked my interest in, in the implications of these neg negative reviews in the larger spectrum. So my uh, research question was, how can negative reviews uh, on through the darkest of times um, be understood as part of a renegotiation of video game culture as a whole? Um, the player reviews I looked at um, are from Steam and GOG, formerly Good Old Games. And I chose those two platforms because uh, they're the only big gaming platforms distributing the game for PC that also allow users to rate and um, write re reviews about uh, the games on the platform itself. Uh, the game is also released on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, where users can't write reviews on the platforms. And uh, on Android and iOS, uh, iOS um, <clears throat> but the game uh, came out later on those mobile platforms. So they are not part of my study. They could be interesting, however. Um, so on Steam, there were, uh, there were a total of 407 uh, reviews and 73 of which were negative. And on GOG, there were 13 reviews and um, they have a different rating system uh, from one to five stars. And there were only four users who chose to rate the game on one star or two stars. Uh, a, a few things to note about um, the player reviews and to keep in mind when researching them is that not all players post reviews. So you have to be a certain kind of person to put your opinion out there or you have to care enough to do it. Uh, so there are some opinions missing when researching only the reviews. Furthermore, uh, both platforms are moderated and um, posts that go <clears throat> that break uh, forum rules and guidelines can be deleted by moderators. The guidelines, for example, strictly forbid posting explicit content, advertisement, cheating guides, inappropriate language, and such. And those uh, guidelines are very vague. Um, so it, they can be, they are open for interpretation by moderators. So there is a lot of content that goes missing. And one very interesting rule in the Steam um, forums uh, and, and reviews is that you are not supposed to um, post religious, political, and other prone to huge argument topics, um, which could be anything. And it, on the one hand, it's interesting because it puts uh, games again in an apolitical framework. On the other hand, what that meant, meant for me was that a lot of the, the postings that would interest me could be deleted just by following this guideline. And then there is a third point um, you have to keep in mind that on GOG, um, users that don't even own the game on the platform can post a review. That will be uh, of importance later. So I took those reviews and I, um, I used the qualitative um, content analysis of uh, Philip Myring to um, analyze it and I um, <clears throat> made uh, seven different categories of negative reviews of the game, um, <clears throat> of which the first one is in insignificance of um, gameplay. So reviewers have the feeling that their actions in the game don't have an impact on the outcome of the game and therefore are meaningless. Uh, one user, for example, wrote, this briefly seems interesting, quote, this briefly seems interesting, but very quickly you realize that absolutely nothing you do matters. And bear in mind that the game lets you ultimately influence the outcome of the game on a smaller scale by saving NPCs, etc. Although it, the game does not reward that in any way, shape or form other than the fantasy of the players uh, themselves. And uh, this category is also connected with um, the next category, um, which is unauthentic uh, fight against national socialism, um, where players cannot just go ahead uh, in through the darkest of times, players cannot just go ahead and start shooting Nazis and throw over the regime like uh, some reviews which it suggest is normal in a, in a game uh, about the Second World War. The players uh, are used to those other games and feel that the way uh, it's depicted here is unauthentic. And this missing authenticity, authenticity can be explained uh, with the theory of uh, brand World War II from Jonathan Bollinger and Andrew Salvati. 
that suggests that the collective historical understanding of uh, the Second World War is influenced and reproduced by all types of popular media and recreates impressions of a war that was necessary and that was fought to save the world from the evil of the Nazis. And it, and it includes um, great acts of heroism by individuals and mostly individual soldiers. And in, in digital games, that often leads to a, a narrative of a single man, and it's usually a man in those stories, um, overthrowing the Nazi regime uh, on his own. And Through the Darkest of Times does not give players the same way to immerse into the time uh, of the Second World War, and therefore is um, conceived as unauthentic. And the very masculine notion uh, of being able to act on a large societal scale and having a big impact is taken away from the player and the player is instead uh, put into a small private scale, which is historically conceived as a female space. And now I, I can prove that all of those reviews were written by men, but um, I think um, it's, um, I think you can put it in a, uh, in the perspective, uh, in the, um, uh, but it can be understood as a part of the, the erosion of the masculine space, in my opinion. And the third category um, is the most boring category, and it's boring gameplay. Um, it's basically um, players saying that the game is um, gameplay-wise and the game mechanics are boring, and it's mostly connected to other forms of criticism and, and comes uh, with other forms of criticism in the reviews. There are, however, some um, reviews that use it as a sole reason for saying the game uh, is um, bad or rated negatively. Um, they say, like, the game's intentions are, are good, but the way it, uh, the way it is... Um, is played is boring. Um, the fourth uh, category is a, mo a modern perspective on history, and I have three subcategories for it. So, um, I separated it because those uh, categories are very different from each other, even though they are again connected, and you will see why uh, when I explain it. Um, the historic, the first one uh, of those is historically uh, inaccurate, where um, it is claimed that the historical content shown in the game uh, is not historically correct. For example, that newspapers shown in the game don't use the actual headlines of the time. Um, and these claims of uh, historically, historical inaccuracy are not backed up by any facts or sources, but they're just thrown into the room saying the way the game depicts history is wrong. Then the next category is forcibly teaching history. Um, the developers are being accused of forcibly trying to teach uh, history to people, saying that the game is not subtle enough and quote, the game ducks into safe avenues, waves around atrocities almost for shock value. And the last category, um, and this is what inspired me initially uh, to do this research in the first place, uh, is called leftist political agenda. Uh, and it's some reviewers um, see the game as a piece of leftist, uh, leftist propaganda using the Holocaust to debase um, right-wing politics. And they feel like the representation of national socialism is a strike at the foreign politics uh, of the USA under Donald Trump. As such, the game is put into the context, right? And through the darkest of times is called, for example, quote, a hyper left social, social justice warrior game that destroys any real sense of history or politics. Um, a quote, and and this reproach of the instrumentalization of the Holocaust is closely connected to a revisionist view of history and the denial of the Holocaust in general, articulating that the history represented is false um, and, quote, written by the victor, meaning the Allied forces. 
Uh, very interestingly, uh, most of the reviews that reach in that direction were written uh, in the first two days after the release of the game, and they received the most attention by other other viewers, uh, other users. Sorry, um, who can who can rate the game, uh, the reviews itself as helpful or not helpful? So those uh, reviews got the most upvotes that said this review is helpful but they got even more not helpful votes. And one user, um, one of the users posted on Steam and GOG under the same name as well. And all of this together leaves open the assumption that uh, some right-wing movements, presumably uh, some Gamergate movement, acted in an organized manner to downrate the game as fast as possible in order to stop people from buying the game at all. Um, putting everything together, I perceived different aspects of a cultural war ranging from the erosion of a masculine space uh, of gaming as a whole um, to a large scale political issues discussed in the reviews of a very small indie game. Thank you for your attention. I hope um, this all made sense to you somehow. Um,